What is going on you guys? This is DJ Overspin and today what I'm going to be showing you is how to set up your own 7 Days to Die dedicated server on your home computer or if you have like a computer on the side that is connected to the internet you can definitely do that on your personal uh, side computer. Uh, all you, it, the, the minimum requirements for you to actually run the server is at least a um, a quad core processor along with a 8 gig RAM capacity on there because this server actually does use up a pretty good vast majority of your RAM along with your um, your processor so if you have like a quad core processor laptop that you want to run this server on you can actually most definitely do it um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to run your own server so right now um, I have my seven days to die dedicated server I have it installed on my computer and uh, what I did for the new update which is the a 20.1 uh, update uh, which is the latest experimental build right there uh, I just right click on the dedicated server right here and click experimental unstable build and I have the a 20.1 update on there so after I installed it on here I do not want to launch it right then and there uh, what I want to do is set up this server so that uh, whenever I'm playing online and I want people like friends and uh, other people to come join I can uh, definitely do that um, so what I want to do from here is I want to go over to my dedicated server file or folder right here and from here, what I want to do is set up my server from what I want to do. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and open it. Well, I only have it open it up in uh, Notepad. I know some pe some other people like to use uh, Notepad++ and other things. But right now on this computer, uh, I only have regular Notepad. So from here, uh, I can set up my, my information here of what I want to do. Um, so let's say uh, my server name, I just want to go ahead and change it to uh, uh, There are lots of zombies So I just have it like that and then I can put my description of the server like Don't try to under s Estimate me <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to spell guys uh, so if I uh, um, if I misspelled that, I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, you can put your description in here. So whenever someone's trying to come join, you can put like a brief little dis uh, server description in here uh, before they connect, and that's going to be the name of your server right there. Um, you can set up a website URL if you have a public website. Uh, you can have that shown up in the browser. Uh, for now, I just leave it blank because there is no server website URL. Uh, and the server password, you can set this up if you don't want anybody uh, outside of your friend group to come join. So I could just say, um, um, come join as the, uh, as the password and everything. So whenever someone tries joining into the server, they got to put in come join as the password. But for now, I'm not going to put a password. Um, your server port is, of course, by default, uh, 26900. Um, I would keep it default if you want to keep it default. If you don't want it default, you can, you know, put it up to three, or you can just go ahead and put like, let's say five six, you know, two five six three three. You can do that um, if you want to, but right now I just want to put it as default that port right there um, now in order for you to make this server public you have to either go through your modem router or your router or your internet service provider you have to open up your computer to those ports and everything so this port you have to set it up as UDP UDP export uh, or import export open port whatever it is so you open up that port to inbound and outbound traffic um, and you might have to disable your firewall on your computer depending on if your computer has like extensive um, you know firewall permissions and everything so you might have to uh, edit your computer as well and open up your 
internet to the computer and uh, some uh, some modem routers or routers uh, actually do require you to set up your computer on a static IP address uh, along with setting it up on a DNS input uh, inbound and outbound so um, setting a static IP address on your computer is quite easy you just go through your internet settings and set up a, a dedicated IP address that way whenever your computer is connected to the internet your computer is always on a static IP and you can set it up on DNS so I'm gonna keep it as that um, port right there nobody is able to access my computer at this or not access my computer but uh, access my server because I don't have this computer set up on the DNS server along with the open ports so nobody is able to um, come join in now right here uh, with the server max world transfer speeds and kilobits um, is default by 512 but if you want to speed it up like if you have the best internet in the world uh, which nobody has the best internet in the world except for Google um, but you can actually set this maximum of 1300 uh, any higher will all automatically default the 1300 kilobits per second um, or yeah that much um, and you could do whatever you want to do with that um, the server max player count you can increase it or decrease it depending on what you want to do uh, with my current server I have it way higher than normal uh, which I know 16 is the max but my server you can come join in at 60 um, that's that's where I have it set at um, another thing I like to set up is the admin interfaces right here so whenever I am not at home and I want to monitor my server and everything I can change this to true and I can just figure out what IP address my computer is which my computer and my internet is all on, uh, on a static IP address so I can you know monitor my computer from anywhere that I want to be at or not my computer but my server so I can monitor my server anywhere I'm at and make sure everybody's playing safe see how many people are on uh, make sure nobody's teleporting around if they were able to you know hack into it but I leave this as false because of course I'm not gonna <clears throat> monitor my computer anywhere um, or not computer but uh, monitor my server anywhere and everywhere I go so I just place this as false so if someone actually were able to get to the IP address along with the port 8080 which is the TCP IP uh, uh, port TCP port and um, you know I just leave it false so that nobody can actually get to it um, telnet would actually work out if you actually have like a program like this right here the putty configuration so you could just like connect to um, your server with telnet <clears throat> and uh, be able to do things on there now with this one I rather prefer it being false because there are some hackers that can find their way around it so if you turn this to false hackers can't get into it and they can't you know make themselves admin and do whatever they want to do on their uh, on your server and everything so that's uh, basically it right there uh, you can change all the other settings over here like the game difficulty you know like you can change it to five which is the the hardest but I'll leave it at default at two you can change anything you want um, now with the day day night uh, day night length uh, which you can actually change it as much as you want um, so this is like in real time minutes right here uh, my server is actually set to 360 minutes which is six hours per in-game day uh, I, I set it that way because it helps everybody else go out and do missions and kill zombies level up more gives them more time to build up their uh, their horde base as they go along <clears throat> and uh, do whatever they need to do and of course the daylight length is 18 which is my default right there uh, which is 18 hours a day in um, in daylight time uh, in game uh, I, I change all that but I just leave all the rest of this 
as you know normal stuff you know like 72 hours airdrop frequency uh your airdrop marker so if you want everybody to see your air uh, or see the airdrops that drop while they're logged in <clears throat> you can turn this to true so that they can actually see where the airdrops are uh if you're running a pve pvp server depending you know you can have an airdrop and everybody can see where the airdrop is and uh be able to um, get to the airdrop before anybody else does. Now, with uh, certain other things right here, uh, you can change anything and everything that you want through this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and uh, exit out of that. Now I got my server actually set up. Actually, before I even do that, uh, there's another step that I forgot to... Um, mention now there is one where you can actually set up your uh, game world name which this is um, set up as regular uh, Na uh, Naz Navis game <laughs> world and everything um, but because I am running off of uh, the a 20.1 the latest experimental build uh, I do want to just do pre-gen uh, 10k and uh, with this 10k of course you have to change the world size if you don't change the world size it'll probably conflict on everything of your world size so I change it to uh, 10 10 3 uh, 10,365 that's the world gen size uh, and you can change the game name to whatever you want so I'll just take uh, just change the name to um, um testing things out so i'll just do that one and then save the game now you are ready to launch your game server so what i'm gonna do is launch the game server now it'll launch like this and then once it launches like this it'll come up with this and then i can exit out of that and then put this right there so all I have to do is just wait for this to actually connect to the Steam ports, which, you know, doesn't take too long unless you're actually running mods. If you're running mods, it takes a lot longer, and uh, it's just not going to be a good day. And it's just about done. It doesn't take too terribly long to actually run that. <clears throat> see world load pre-gen 10k which is right there now in order for you to find out if your load is actually uh, if your world is actually <laughs> loaded in sorry if I'm not speaking correctly uh, you could just go right here and then you can go to seven days to die and then saves and then your pre-gen right here and then testing things out the great lands is my public server right now I have it shut down for me to show this video to you everybody uh, nobody's on the server nobody's trying to join in the server so um, but from here is where the the world is so right now testing things out automatically creates the world for you so everything's all good now when you go over here game server log on successful so your server is now online so now I can just launch it just like normal go over here okay, right now my computer or my this computer is not hosted online it is blocked from inbound outbound uh, connections from outside so Everything's all good from there. My firewall is turned on. Everything is all secured in place. So nobody should be able to connect to this server. Now that it's launched, all I have to do is just join game. And there it is right here, which shows the IP address right here. That's not the external IP address. This is the secured IP address. Or if you can't find it there, oops, you could do that as well. Connect to your local one. And then there you go. 
And from there, you can see from here, it says that I connected alpha 20.1, everything. So I'm loading in just like normal. It's initializing world, which is going to be pretty quick and simple for me to set everything up because it's on my local PC. Um, now, with it being on my server that's right next to me, right now it's not doing anything but just sitting there. The server's not turned on because I'm doing this video. Um, but if anybody wants to come join in on my server, uh, you can. Um, if nobody has the mods that I have, uh, there is going to be a link to my Discord server on my server. Uh, so you can come join it and be able to download the mods right then and there on your computer, add it to your game, and be able to play on my server. The server does not give you the mods. The mods, you have to have it installed on your computer. So, as you can see, I am currently on my computer. So I got to do all sorts of different tutorials and everything because I just set everything up. I just joined the server. So right here I don't have admin mode. See? Denying, denying. So in order for me to actually make myself admin on this server I can quickly go to the terminal here and then I could do admin add And that's the code. Admin add the username of the person that joined and then put the permission as zero. Once you do that, now I have permissions as an admin. So from here, I can put in everything here. I can float around. I can go way up in the air and I can just go below the world, which is not the best looking thing in the world, but that's basically how it goes right there. So now you're admin and I can actually turn myself invisible, turn on fly mode and show like the sta uh, stability, show light preferences, uh, our perforations, everything. Like I can do everything admin mode wise. Now, um, now that the server is actually set up, there is no password on it. Uh, nobody can actually connect to it at this moment because it is not set up publicly. You can set it up yourself. Uh, you have to do your research, probably contact your internet service provider to actually figure all that out. Now, adding mods to your server is easy, simple. So with all that, clearing all pools, everything is done, and then shut down. Now it's shut down. Now, installing uh, mods to your server, this is easy, simple not hard to do is you go to your dedicated server right here and of course you're like where where is the mods folder you have to install your own mods folder so create a folder called mods and then you can add any mod that you want in your dedicated server right here if it's public and you don't turn off your computer or if it's private and you like turn off your computer or put it in sleep mode either or you can turn off the server and then like put your computer in sleep mode or shut down the computer either or but here um, I want to install the mods in here so within this uh, folder here that I created in mods I downloaded um, not that one I created it or I, I downloaded the mods that are on my discord server which is uh, sent out to everybody who ever wants to come join in on the server uh, whenever it's back up and running after this video but um, you could basically take this and uh, you know install everything like I, I want that one uh, that one here I want that one or uh, I want the Master Chef Redux I want that one okay see that's that's copied over and then I want canned foods all sorts of stuff I don't have to just like pick and choose what I want to go on my server like if I have everything set up just like this I could just 
copy everything over into my mods folder, which will take a while. Uh, which, you know, everything is solid state on my computer, so everything's all good right there. So, let's <clears throat> get these files. Now all the mods are actually set up right here. So, all I have to do, dedicated server, launch it. And then I just wait for it to connect all the way. And now let me, let me show you some of the mods that I have, like Pac-Man right here. Uh, I got more power. Uh, let's see, nuclear power source right here. So that's nuclear energy that I can make. Um, let's see, uh, the Master Chef Redux, which actually helps out a lot with, you know, making canned foods and making more food that you want to make. Uh, if you like hunting around, collecting all the meat uh, as you go along and you do a lot of farming, just like uh, what I have on my my public server as well I have all that um, I think I might have to remove the Humvee because the vehicle madness one actually does have the Humvee in it so I might just get rid of the Humvee on my public server so that's that's all uh, all I got right here um, all this is actually um, what well, was compatible with the A20.1 um, latest experimental so you can actually add all this. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what other mods are actually compatible with the A20.1 and uh, just do whatever I can with that. And uh, let's see, is it connected? Just about connected. And now that it, it it'll, it'll be connected soon. So I'll just uh, launch my seven days to die latest experimental I'm pretty sure it's gonna be turned on anyways and with this uh, if you wanna put the the mods into your game of course you could do the same thing go to your seven days to die regular sir uh, uh, regular file and then you do the same thing. Go to mods and then you add the mods that you want to install. <clears throat> I got multiple different mods in here and everything. So, yeah. So, I want to go ahead and connect straight back to the server that I connected to. There's no password, there's nobody in here. And then now I'm just loading it all up. I gave the server some time to load up the mods, so I just gotta give it some time for me to load up all the all the information from the server because of all the mods that are on there. So when you add these mods, it actually modifies the server along with the map that's on there and the presets of anything that has to be spawned in. So you just have to wait a while for it to load up in the game. All right, and it should be done pretty soon. See, it's just trying to build up all the uh, the new uh, kind of different things that are going on in this world, uh, spawning everything, especially with zombies and animals and entities such as vehicles. So you just have to wait. The more mods you add in there, the longer it takes. Now I'm creating player. All right. Now I'm in. Now I can go in debug mode, creative mode. And then now that I am here, I can actually see around here and see if I can find any of the 
spawned vehicles from one of, there it is, one of the mods. So we got a damaged uh, orange Evo that I can, you know, scrap down and everything. I can scrap it down, get some parts off it if I actually do have the skills. There's one of the military things here. Um, now, one thing I like to do every once in a while is look at the... Uh, the server as well so whenever you're monitoring your server you can actually see where people are at at any given time uh, you can see where their vehicles are at or you can see where other vehicles are at as well so as I'm logged in here look at this this right here repairable RV so if I go into creative mode I can go to RV and uh, find the repair tool. Let's see, that's that. So if I have uh, repair tool RV, if I have that in my pocket, boom, collected it. So now I can place this RV down it's all mine so now I could drive the RV depending if it'll let me but right now there is no fuel in it so with me trying to drive it around good luck with that now that's that's basically how it goes right there there's no gas in it so I can't drive it so yeah I can uh, get in this vehicle I could drive it around just like normal the mods are working just fine there are no errors on my part nothing in red and of course if I go over here see repairable military truck now that's the only thing that comes up but it's okay but I can see my error block in position that's X Z why so I can actually see exactly where my coordinates are right here in this server uh, if someone actually did go into debug mode just like me went into debug mode and uh, I can actually see it here client executing client side debug creative mode right here so I can actually see that on my server so if someone actually did uh, try the command and was denied that it would show up on here uh, if someone were to bypass anything you can still see it on here along with their coordinates as well and um, be able to find out where other vehicles are at um, but as far as things go the only vehicle right now is this BMRV right here that's the only vehicle I can see uh, but other than that, I don't see any other vehicle here. Uh, this is just fresh spawn here. So I don't see much on here um, other than that. Uh, as far as um, other mods as well, like the mods where I can make canned foods, I can make canned pasta, all sorts of different stuff right here um, within that mod that I just installed. So I can do that. Um, I can like you know how the inventory is if you have pack mule turned up all the way this is as far as it goes with the mod that I have on on there so yeah that's that's pretty much all the mods that I have installed so I have all the mods they're all working just fine now we got this Humvee right here is repairable and I could still loot off of this Humvee right here so with me looting off this there's only a bone in there I don't need it I can fix this Jeep up and I can take it Oop, I went the wrong way. So, with this mod, it actually works. That's how you install the mods on the server. Um, so, I got a lot of different mods. I'm testing new mods as we go along. Uh, along with uh, deleting some mods that are not even needed. So, if anybody wants to come join my public server, of course, the Great Lands is my public server. It is a PvE server, so if you like PvP, I'm sorry, but I do PvE uh, just to build up a community and help protect on everything else. So that's how you uh, create your own server uh, on your 
on your computer and it's easy simple nothing hard to do and uh, you know it's it's quite simple um, another thing I like when setting up this server as well is setting up a message so with me uh, shutting down that if I go to my dedicated server and I open up my server config file you can actually set up uh, the server login confirmation text and you can say anything in there like welcome to this server that way when you launch the server and someone is connecting um, all they would see is welcome to the server and then they confirm and then they're able to like join in 100% this is like something that works out especially with uh, colored as well so if I put uh, F uh, FC 600 which is a different um, different color in there I can do that right there so that's a different color so if I save this let me go ahead and launch the server I'll give you an example this actually is pretty pretty awesome I think that's one of the colors I can't remember a hundred percent off the bat <clears throat> so while it's launching I'll just go ahead and do this real quick So it does take a while for this one to launch because of all the mods. But I like it. I like um, running the server. Um, if you want to keep your telnet enabled and everything, which I don't even recommend if you're going to do a dedicated server, you're doing everything for free right on your computer. You just have to open up your computer to the outside world, which that's why I have my own server which is only dedicated as a server uh, no personal information on it it's fresh install with Windows Server 2012 so it's it's actually made up to actually run the server um, with a different kind of tool so I'm gonna wait for this to build up real quick is loading up all the stuff Now some of the mods like the Pac-Man mod right here, of course it's going to come up with some issues, but it's it's nothing to be worried about. Um, but some things, like if they actually do patch up the, the mod and everything, they'll let you know, hey, this is a new version of Pac-Man. Go ahead and download it, and then you install it on your server, share it with your friends, all sorts of stuff. And then you're good. All right, so server log on. And this is one way to connect to the server. All right, so with that custom server message that I installed or that I set up, you can change it either way you want to do it especially with the color there's multiple different color codes out there uh, right now I think that's one of the color codes that you can use if not it'll just show up as white so we shall see so receiving and loading configs so I'm waiting for the server to give me the configurations from the server so I could be loaded up And if it stays like this, you can actually monitor over here too. So you can monitor your server from another screen, or if you have your own dedicated server right next to you, you can look at this screen, see what's going on over here, which, you know, I can see everything from here. Initializing world. Wait, is it showing? Oh. <laughs> It's not showing it. Hold on. Let me, let me move this back up. <coughs> uh oh. I didn't want that. There you go. So I can see from here. And I can see from here. Sorry about that. I didn't realize that you can see it. But uh, yeah, I can monitor everything here while I'm on the game server. 
<clears throat> so yeah. Everything is loading up like normal, no red, we're good. And then of course right here, <clears throat> that's a different color code then. I, I don't have the color code. Uh, but it'll actually show up server information, whatever rules and regulations you have. You could put in links, anything like that. Right on in here, you can either choose to leave the server or continue, which, you know, want to continue. And then boom, there you go. I'm right in the server again. So in order for you to change the color codes, you can go online and uh, choose the color codes yourself. So that's how you um, install your own server, how to run your own server, how to manage your own server. Everything's all good from there. You can just like ban uh, ban me if you want to or anything like that. That's how you do it on your local computer. That's why, you know, over here I always keep this false and this false here. So no one is able to try controlling my server right then and there. And of course, if you want Telnet enabled, if it's true, by default there is no password. So if there's no password, anybody can get into your server, which is going to be a bad day when you set up your server. So always, when you're running Telnet, always put either false or you want to monitor it, you put a password in here, such as this as well, the control panel right here. Always change the password. You know, that way nobody gets access to your server. They turn into God mode, they ban you on there, and then they start destroying your, your stuff. Everything that you worked hard for within five days of being on the server could be lost if you do not change this. If you do not change this, everything is going to fall downhill. But anyways, that's my video for today on how to install your own dedicated server on your own computer. Uh, and have it running public <clears throat> through um, through Steam and everything. And I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. So that's shut down. And uh, I hope this actually helps out to a lot of people, especially with installing mods on here, which, you know, is quick, simple, easy. You don't have to do anything but extract the files straight in there, and everything's all good. Uh, some mods actually do have like a sub file, a, a subfolder in here. So if you like, let's say the canned food, I go in here and there's another folder in here. Uh, I have to take the folder in here and then go back to the mods and it, it and put it in here because it's not gonna read no subfolder. Is it has to have the mods info.xml file right inside that folder inside the mods. So that's how you basically do it. So that's how you uh, get everything up and rolling and uh, if you guys find this very um, very helpful please leave a like feel free to stop by in my stream whenever I'm actually streaming uh, on Twitch I, I stream this game every every time I'm streaming uh, basically from here until whenever I get bored but I'm gonna leave this server up and running if everybody is interested on coming and joining into the server, uh, you can, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to keep the server up to date with all the latest experimental. I'm going to try some new mods as well. Uh, in my server, I'm going to have a link to my server, uh, my Discord server, in order for you to achieve, uh, acquire the mods that I've been using on my server. That way, if you're trying to connect, and you're not able to connect or you know you're getting error codes because you joined the server that has all these mods then you know you have to go on my discord server just to get uh, the the download for all the mods extracted into your game and then you can come join so thank you very much for watching uh, leave a comment down below of any kind of questions that you have on setting up your own dedicated server uh, if anything goes wrong with trying to set everything up, just let me know. I'm going to go ahead and end this video and uh, get my public server back up and running. Uh, it's going to be up and running 24-7, uh, even if anybody tries joining or not. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I can actually monitor my, my, uh, my server just straight up at home. I don't need to monitor it while I'm at work. You know, simple as that. But I'll be I'll be monitoring it every once in a while. So 
thank you very much guys for watching and i will talk to you guys on the next one hope to see you in my stream peace